What's up? Super excited to be doing this. Thank you for the nice introduction. I like when people give me compliments on camera and it's recorded, so that's great. All right, so let's just get started. We're gonna, today is gonna be all about lead generation. I'm gonna show you how to get more leads for your business, whether you're running, you're selling products, you're selling software, or if you're selling information products. We're gonna walk through all of that from start to finish. And we're gonna start with the introduction. So who is this perfect for? Well, if you're a photographer or other real world service provider, like you actually need to be in person to sell what you're selling, you're gonna find a ton of tips today about generating more leads. It's also perfect for consultants, people who do service-based businesses online. This is for life coaches, personal trainers online, if you're a marketing consultant, anything like that, you're gonna get a lot of tips today about generating more leads for your business. It's also perfect for product sellers, all types of product sellers, not just online product sellers, but people who are selling physical and tangible items. We've got one expert that built an e-commerce business. They're gonna share everything they know about generating sales for their physical products. And to be honest with you, I can't wait to listen in on some of these presentations from our experts, but you'll hear more about that in a few minutes. So first, what's the big problems that you face with lead generation today? Now, I know we're gonna, you kind of all introduced yourself, but how about you? What's the first pro like big problem that you had? Hey, Derek. So the, uh, the main problem we have is that um, like, we get a lot of traffic to our site. Uh, we were blessed with SEO. We, we get a lot of people coming. And uh, we, we want to be able to uh, get people in with the software. And the only issue we have is we don't necessarily want to capture an email. Okay. Because we try to be different than the, our competitors. So the com competitors, you have to fill out a form even to get a price. With us, we want our brand to be more open and more uh, easygoing. We don't want to do that in your face, pop up, email, put yeah. it in here type thing. Very interesting. We're going to actually talk about that in one of the presentations. So that's, that's a great problem to have and it's very easily solvable and we're going to talk about that. How about, what's one of your issues that you're having? Right, so um, with Kickstarter, it helped out a lot. I was able to do the PR blitz that you talked about before. Yeah. Um, had great press, but now that I'm on my own, uh, there's really not much that I can do to get PR interested in me. And again, like, oh, I'm still selling my product. I'm still selling my product. Yeah. What can I do to get that same type of rush that I had during my initial launch? Awesome. So one of the experts is going to be talking about how to get free press later on today, and I think you're going to personally love that one, and as well as everyone who's watching from the internet audience. So let's keep going. When I actually ask people what problems do they have about lead gen, they almost always have the same exact issues. They always say, I don't know how to get started, is one of the first things that they say. The next thing they say is, I don't know how to get people who want what I sell to my website. Because there's some people who get a lot of traffic, but it doesn't convert. And they don't know why it's not converting. And a lot of the times they think they have a conversion problem, but it's actually a traffic problem. They don't know how to get the right people. We're gonna talk about that today. Another problem that people have is once I get to my site, I don't know how to get them to want to do business with me. Because it's, it's a whole other thing, to get qualified traffic, qualified people, and then to actually have those people want to buy from you before you start selling anything. It's like kind of like, like an iPhone. You don't have to, you already want that. They don't have to sell you very hard on that. We're gonna walk you through how you can do this with whatever product that you're doing, selling today. Another problem that people have is, I'm getting some customers, but I don't know how to get more. This is the case for a lot of people, where they're just getting, you know, they're making some revenue, but they wanna be able to skyrocket that to six figures and beyond. They don't, they don't know how to do that. So we're gonna talk about that today as well. So first I wanna introduce you to the four key pillars of successful lead generation online. These pillars are gonna be kinda of throughout the presentations today and you're gonna see how to actually leverage each of these pillars. So if you're, if you're watching online, you're here, write this stuff down. The first thing is before you start generating leads, you have to figure out who wants what you sell. Who actually wants to buy it? A lot of people start, they start off building their businesses thinking like, all right, I'm selling an iPad case. So my target audience is people who have iPads. That's too broad. Most people have this issue where they have this huge niche and they can't think in like these 
more specific targets because they start thinking like, well, I don't want to lose out on these other people. And that's a big mistake. So we're going to talk about before you start generating leads, you have to know who you want to come to your site. The next thing is once you know who wants what you sell, you have to make them want to do business with you. So once you know who you want, you got to make sure they want you. This is the second pillar. The third pillar is once you know that they want to do business with you, you need to get their attention. Because it's, it's a whole other thing to actually meet one person and have them actually want to buy your product, but it's a whole other thing to get 10,000 people and have them want to buy your product. And then the fourth pillar is once you get the attention, you've got to ramp it up. You've got to not get five sales, you've got to get 25 sales, 100 sales, 1,000 sales. So for right now, I've got a simple task for everyone who is watching. This is actually for the internet audience specifically. Step one, go to facebook.com slash social triggers. This is my Facebook page. Once you're there, you're going to see this top post where I obviously love pictures of myself. So I have a picture of myself as the top post. And what I want you to do is find that post, leave a comment introducing yourself, and also click the share button to let people know you're watching this live right now. I would like to say that this has a benefit to you, and it does, other than the fact that I get to meet you, but the real reason is I want more people watching this live stream, and I can do it with your help. So please do that. While you're all getting ready to get started with that, I want to introduce the experts that I have today. These, the first expert is Kevin Rogers. This guy's a former stand-up comedian turned direct response copywriter. I had the pleasure of meeting him at a conference about a year ago or maybe six months ago, and I saw him give one of the funniest presentations I've ever seen. Not only was it funny, it was highly valuable. So I had to have him on Creative Live today. So Kevin, come on out. <laughs> That's Thanks, right. Derek. Hey, appreciate you having me, buddy. Sweet. So why don't you tell people about where they can find you online and a little bit more about what you do and how you got started? All right. Well, you can find me at thecopywritersedge.com. That's my main blog. And if you want to see what blogs looked like five years ago, good example. <laughs> uh, not a social media expert. I'm a copywriter. So my job, I'm a direct response copywriter. So not the Mad Men type. Big concept guy, more the, my job is to, when people come to your website, that they take action. I get paid by making people take action. So we're gonna talk a lot about that today, about connecting with your visitors. That's what I feel like I, I can best help you with, is you know three things need to happen when someone comes to your site. They need, you need to get their attention, you need to make a connection, and get them to take action. Yeah. So, and I started, I did stand-up comedy in my 20s, yeah. Toured all around the country telling jokes in, in dingy places that you'd never want to go. And uh, <laughs> I, I pull from a lot of that experience into what I do now. So it's, it's really fun and interesting. I mean, who better? The comedians know how to get attention and keep it. Because if they don't, they get stuff thrown at them, right? Yes. You learn to duck and yeah. you learn to think quick. Yes. And one of the key pillars is making people want to do business with you. This is the guy that's going to show you how to tell your story to make people want to do business with you with what you call the 60 second sales hook. And we're going to t talk about that a little bit later today. So thank you, Kevin. Yeah. The next person I want to introduce you to is Melanie Duncan. She has a very interesting story. Not only is she one of the leading experts on using Pinterest to market your business, prior to that, she launched an e-commerce company where she sold fraternity and sorority clothing. And I think she grew to one of the biggest fraternity and sorority clothing sellers online right now. So Melanie, come on out. Hey, how are you? I'm so excited to be here. So like Derek said, my background is in e-commerce, so actually selling apparel and home decor online. So some of the things I'm going to be talking and teaching all of you here this uh, two-day period is going to be um, how I was able to, without the help of any PR agency, without any PR knowledge, um, get my products featured on Nate Berkus in New York Magazine, all these different sites and uh, publications and programs because what I thought would work and what actually worked was a completely different story. So I want to kind of give you that shortcut. And I'm also going to be talking a lot about website design and navigation because it's something that I've spent years testing and learning about. You know, of course we all want to get traffic, but once you get that traffic to your website, what are you doing to turn them into customers? So that's something I'm going to spend a lot of time talking about this week. 
Hey, Melanie, thanks. I'm super Thank excited. You. you can actually find her at melanieduncan.com, where she you kind of publish videos once yep. in a while about business stuff. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'll see All you right. later. The next person I want to introduce you to is my man Pat Flynn from smartpassiveincome.com. He was a former architect who got laid off and then built an online business that grew past his levels of salary for the architect world. So come on out, Pat. Tell us a little about your story. <laughs> my man. Hey, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, as Derek was saying, I used to be in the architecture world, and unfortunately, due to a, or actually fortunately, due to a layoff, um, I've kind of been able to experience what really online business can do for us, and, and it's really life-changing. So I'm going to be talking a lot about your platform, your website, but also expanding beyond your platform using multimedia, things like podcasting and YouTube videos. I loved that you all did a video for this and kind of experienced what that was like and how nerve-wracking that is, but also how rewarding that can be. So I'm going to be talking about that. And also, tomorrow I'm going to be talking a lot about affiliate marketing, actually, yeah. and how to do that in a way where you're not being aggressive and you know, your audience can actually thank you for the recommendations that you're giving them. Um, and you, know, you can make a lot of good money, but also build a deeper relationship with your audience at the same time. So I'm really excited to be here. Thank you again. He's really the multimedia machine because I'm, I like to read content. He convinced me to start a podcast. He convinced me to start doing videos because this guy's like on every website you could possibly imagine. And he's going to share his whole strategy with you later today and how it helped him grow his business. So thank you, Pat. All right. Now I want to take a second. I know you all introduced yourselves and where you came from. I want to introduce the studio audience. I want to know what kind of business you're running, the types of the, the big problems you're facing with either lead generation or closing the sale, and I want to just know more about what you do. So let's start with Lauren, right at the, right at the beginning. Okay. So my name is Lauren Doyle. Uh, my business is clinichorsemanship.com. Okay. And it is a web-based business that hasn't officially launched yet. So it's a good timing for me to come here because that kind of helps me to map out my plan a little bit better on, on what I want to do. Nice. So, so you're kind of just getting started and you're yes. teaching horsemanship skills or equestrian? Yeah, so it's a, it's a group of trainers that there's a specific horsemanship concept. And it's something that um, in the horse industry, there's a lot of people that are interested in this concept. But there's not that, people aren't crossing the lines. So people are st staying strictly within their own discipline. Okay. And so I'm breaking down those barriers. And Perfect. I'm saying, we're all talking about the same thing here. We all need to learn from each other. And this is what is great. And it's been great for thousands of years. We need to have everybody know how to do this stuff, not just a select group. My question is to you, how did you get started with this? Oh, well, it's kind of interesting. I actually um, moved to Kentucky from Montana. Okay. Um, to apprentice under someone who was an amazing horseman. And um, I apprenticed under him for 12 years until he passed away. And uh, he was extremely undervalued um, because he was ahead of his time. But there was okay. another group of people that were in the Western horse world that were practicing uh, horsemanship in the same way. They recognized how amazing he was. And once he passed away, then I was kind of at the precipice where I'm going, okay, so do I need to be the person that now steps in the ring and teaches? Wow. No, I don't want to do that. I want everyone to be able to do this. I, don't, I want to affect more people than just the people I can reach. I see. And that's how it was born. So that was kind of your, you, you apprentice under this master, passed away, now you want to share this with everyone else. Yes. I, want, I really want to basically raise the consciousness of the horse industry so that everybody, whether you're an Olympian or a girl in the backyard, knows how your horse's behavior is great horsemanship and how it's connected. That is awesome. All right, thank you, Lauren. You're welcome. How about you? Hi, my name is Matt, and uh, my company makes inventory software for small business. Um, we try to take a different approach. So uh, in the industry, most of the inventory software, it's really expensive, really complicated, hard to use. We try to do the exact opposite. Okay. So we design it with a designer. Uh, we price it more appropriately. And uh, we've already gotten some traction. So I feel like we're on the verge of a tipping point. We okay. have about 300,000 users already. And I feel like we can almost make inventory software as common as accounting software is for, for yeah. small business. So, 
What's interesting about this is I have a friend who owns a comic store. And in his store, he has all the latest technology for managing his, his company. But he has a lot of other friends that have comic stores. You have comic store owners, no other comic store owners. And he told me that in the comic industry, people don't have like point of sale systems. They don't have inventory software. A lot of these people do it by hand. They spend hours every single week Absolutely. managing their inventory by hand, even though there's a piece of software out there that does it for them. Yeah. Now I asked them, tell me a little bit more about this. And they couldn't see the value in spending 2000 or $3,000 on a piece of software like this. I mean, to me, that makes no sense. I rather, you know, I'll pay any amount of money to get back five minutes of my life, let alone five hours a week. But it seems like you're going a different route where you're making this more accessible, and ideally you'll be able to help people just like that comic store absolutely. that doesn't have a POS. Absolutely, and what we find is most customers come from absolutely doing nothing, like pen and paper, or yeah. they start with Excel, and then they hit a breaking point, like, oh my gosh, my spreadsheet's now a thousand you know, <laughs> tabs long, and what do I do? And then they, then they actively search us. Yeah, that is very interesting to hear that that's still a problem. I feel like that's like 20 years ago yeah. was solved, or 30 years ago, and now, it's still a huge opportunity, so I'm really looking forward to hearing more about your business later today. Right on. Hi. Hey. I have two businesses. The first one is I have an agency that I help small businesses with their marketing, internet and social media marketing. Cool. And I have an info product, aprendesocialmedia.com, when in that info product I teach people do what I do in, in my agency. So you run an agency and you also teach people who want to have an agency just yeah. like you. And my business is in Spanish. <laughs> and your business is all Spanish speaking yeah. people. That well, is awesome. So how long have you been doing this and how did you get started with it? I started in 2009. My father already have an info product and he, he uh, presented me the business. Uh -huh. And I, I go, okay, that sounds cool because all my life I was in, this, in stores and I know how to sell. I yeah. think I can sell in internet thing. And I came to, to do that. In the process, I found social media marketing and I love it. I see. And I made my I create my agency and later I combined the my father business with my business. Yeah, I don't know how you manage two businesses. I can barely <laughs> run my own life and one business, so I don't know how you do that. <laughs> We are a family team. Okay. Um, I am my boyfriend is my partner. My father is my other partner. And all my family do do the, the same thing. Awesome. Sweet. Now next. Hey, I'm Orlitha. Um, hey. <laughs> I have a wellness business. Um, okay. So a little bit about my background is that I was 270 pounds, and so I well, right. You were 270 pounds. I was 270 pounds. Okay. Um, You're not 270 uh, pounds now. No, no, I'm not even close. I'm half the woman I used to be. Um, so, so um, anyway, long story short, I ended up losing weight um, and then gained some of it back, realized that okay. it's not just about what you're eating, it's about being well on all levels. So I wrote um, cookbooks on how to ancestrally cook a big, huge meal, like if you have a family, how to cook 30 meals at a time in one day and freeze them. So people I did that first. people in their family? No, but then I don't have to cook every day. I'm in the kitchen for 10 minutes and I my see. kids eat hot meals for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So they don't nice. have to you know, deal with anything out of a microwave because the biggest concern was, oh, I don't have time. So then I decided, okay, more people need to hear how to get well, not okay. just what to eat. And so I started a business that way. So I know the biology background. I know how to get people well, but I don't know how to get my story out there. And so I don't know how to tell people. I, I'm not, I don't know marketing or sales at all. I know biology. I know nutrition. Yeah. I know everything about everything else, but not how to get leads, how to make those people sell, how to get more people to my site. So when I saw this, I was like, perfect timing, right? This is interesting because I feel like there's a lot of people, maybe even in this room, or on the internet audience who have this same exact problem. You're really good at what you do. You just don't know how to let other people know about it. You don't know how to get other people back to your website and actually buy whatever it is that you know. And here you are, you, are, you lost a lot of weight, you have this background in biology, so not only are you sharing nutritional advice, you live the change that a lot of these people need to make. And then you made it a lifestyle, and you were trying to get that message out to more people. Right, and I got other people out there who actually follow the lifestyle, have lost uh -huh. the weight, gotten off medication, are awesome, but I mean, you can have a great product and nobody knows about it, then yeah. your great product is the greatest best kept secret ever. And so that's just where I'm at right now. I have the greatest best kept secret ever. Awesome, <laughs> all right. Hi, Derek. Hey. Um, I'm Salman Sajid. Um, 
I, a few years ago when I, the iPad first came out, and on the day of when everyone's saying, hey, this has a Bluetooth connection, I thought to myself, you know what? You could pair that with a keyboard. So right from the start, I set out and I went to CVS and I created my first prototype of what soon became Is that the, like a green folder? Yeah, it's actually, yeah. It's, it's a bit of poster board I got from CVS, uh, some duct tape, you okay. know, the ever-present duct tape, and I, I, made a, I quickly made a case. And, uh, <laughs> that was the first prototype. This is the first prototype. Okay. Not many people have seen this. <laughs> that is know. awesome. Yeah. So, um, you know, two years later, some missteps, uh, it resulted in this. It's a case that, also, that holds the iPad as well as the Apple wireless keyboard. And the main... Uh, this is insane. The innovation here is that the keyboard is tucked underneath the iPad. So it's there when you want it. It's not in your way. You don't have to get out of your way. You just open... Use the iPad as, as you like, and then when you want to type, you just slide it Can out. I see this? Yeah, go ahead. I'm like a little kid when it comes to gadgets and technology, so it's pretty sweet. Yeah. It's a little heavy, though. Yeah, it's like I go to the, the gym for the, that. The Apple wireless keyboard, they didn't optimize it for like this type of use. It's like aluminum you know, compared yeah. to the others, so it is what it is. But this is for people who don't want to compromise the full keyboard experience. You'll notice it's, totally a, get that. it's a little bit wider, right? But if you touch type, and that's the name of the case, actually, touch type, touch type case .com, um, then you will want something like this because okay. you're about like getting the words out quickly and not have to fumble with typos and you know those finicky rubber keyboards. I actually never them. use one of those keyboards because I hate squishing my wrist. It kind of hurts my wrist to do that. Yeah. So now it's finally a full keyboard this solution for, for, the, <laughs> for the iPad. That's awesome. That's right. All right, thank you for coming out. Uh, actually, so you actually started this. How did you get come up with this idea, like where did it come from before we go on? Oh, so, um, I mean, the idea was just me, th when I found out, you know, that it supported Bluetooth, I said, you know, what's, what's, what can make it into a laptop? It's really close. So then I thought of the case idea. I went out and I looked up also how to get a provisional patent, get that, the idea protected. I and see. And then um, I put it on Kickstarter. And nice. what was interesting is I didn't do Kickstarter necessarily for the money, but I did it for the marketing purpose and all that. You know, so that's kind of helped me. But now that I'm off a of Kickstarter, I'm kind of, you know. Awesome. You have to compete with everyone else. All right, great. Next. I'm Ariadna. Hey. Hey, and uh, my website is Memories into Art, and this is basically what I do. Okay. Uh, I take memories and turn them into art. And uh, I think that I have all the problems <laughs> that <laughs> you, you can think of. <laughs> And there is, uh, what, what everybody has said, it's like uh, finding the perfect customer, yeah. uh, reaching to them, and uh, having them buy my art. So what kind of art? I, I'm not the most cultural person in the world, <laughs> so I don't know what this means, but what do you mean? What kind of art do you turn memories into? Uh, so, memories into uh, art, I guess. I take uh, pictures okay. of my customers, uh, uh, and I just... Uh, make cards, for example, invitations, albums, like uh, photo books, uh, and like also... Like a scrapbook, sort of? Yes, yes. And uh, also uh, do like custom art, How did you get into this? How did you get into So you have custom art, albums, invitations. What made you come up with this idea? Uh, I actually am a master of pharmacy. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> See, <laughs> pills to art is what you're yep. telling me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's a story. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, actually, when I got pregnant with my first child, I uh, decided to preserve the memories. Okay. And that's how I started. Uh, I started with scrapbooking, and then I started designing products for scrapbooking, and now I, I, I just want to offer this to other people. Nice. So they can also have the, like, a treasure chest items for, for the children and grandchildren. I guess I'll get there if I have kids. I don't even have a picture sure. of myself other than like from my videos, I guess. But I think your mom has them. <laughs> yeah, she might. She'd probably been hiding them out, right? All the embarrassing ones. She just started exactly. to upload photos of me as a kid to Facebook and I'm hating every second of it because she tags them as soon as she upload, tag, and then she'll like it and then share it. Like she'll like her own post and then share it. Horrible. 